Hello everyone, this video will talk about vernal keratoconjunctivitis and atopic keratoconjunctivitis. Vernal keratoconjunctivitis is an atopic condition that caused by lateral inflammation of the cornea and conjunctiva in a seasonal manner. Atopic keratoconjunctivitis is a chronic inflammatory disease of eye that affects patients with history of atopic dermatitis and or asthma without seasonal correlation. Both vernal and atopic keratoconjunctivitis share the same pathogenesis, which is a combination of IgE and lymphocyte-mediated hypersensitivity reactions. Symptoms of both diseases consisting of severe itching, foreign body sensation and tearing, photophobia, mucus discharge, blurring of vision, vernal keratoconjunctivitis, and atopic keratoconjunctivitis share common signs, which involves diffuse conjunctival injection, punctate epithelial erosions. Distinctive vernal keratoconjunctivitis signs typically appear in two forms. Palpebral vernal keratoconjunctivitis, which is associated with diffuse papillary hypertrophy that is more prominent on the tarsal conjunctiva of the upper eyelid. In more severe cases, giant papillae resembling carbal stones can develop. The second form of vernal keratoconjunctivitis is limbal, which has a thickened, gelatinous appearance, with opalescent spots as shown in this picture, called hornotranta's dots, which are aggregates of eosinophils and epithelial cells. Signs of atopic keratoconjunctivitis Small or medium-sized papillae, as opposed to giant, that appear in the upper and lower palpebral conjunctiva. Vascularization and opacification of the cornea secondary to chronic epithelial disease. The distinction between vernal keratoconjunctivitis and atopic keratoconjunctivitis are as follows. Vernal keratoconjunctivitis age group consists of children and young adults, while atopic keratoconjunctivitis occurs in middle age. Vernal keratoconjunctivitis is often seasonal recurring which is more prevalent in the spring and summer, whereas atopic keratoconjunctivitis occurs year-round. Eyelids in vernal keratoconjunctivitis demonstrates swelling and ptosis compared to atopic keratoconjunctivitis, which characteristically scaly, indurate and inflamed. While the discharge from vernal keratoconjunctivitis is copious, ropey and mucoid, the discharge from atopic keratoconjunctivitis is clear and watery. The limbal in vernal keratoconjunctivitis frequently exhibits swelling and hornotranta's dots, whereas atopic keratoconjunctivitis has no limbal changes. Corneal involvement in vernal keratoconjunctivitis includes shield ulcer and keratoconus. On the other hand, corneal vascularization and opacification can occur in atopic keratoconjunctivitis, which are associated with keratoconus and herpes simplex virus. Usually no cataract with vernal keratoconjunctivitis unless corticosteroid induced, whereas posterior or anterior subcapsular cataract occurs with atopic keratoconjunctivitis. The management of vernal keratoconjunctivitis and atopic keratoconjunctivitis is similar. Starting with environmental control, decrease exposure to the offending antigen and cold compresses. Mild cases are typically managed successfully with topical antihistamines. Moderate disease may be responsive to topical mast cell stabilizers. These drops are typically started in the month before symptoms usually begin in patients with seasonal exacerbations. Severe cases may require the use of topical corticosteroids. They are typically reserved for exacerbations. Whenever corticosteroids are prescribed, it is critical to review the potential dangers of long-term topical corticosteroid use with the patient and family to emphasize the importance of close follow-up and monitoring for adverse effects. Supratarsal injection of corticosteroid is an alternative to topical delivery in cooperative patients with severe symptoms. Steroid-sparing agents have been shown to be effective to treat refractory cases.